it's me, Baron here, with the first episode of Third Degree Thursday. And I'm so happy to have you join me here for this first little episode. Each Thursday, I'm going to be answering your questions from Facebook and Twitter. And today, I'm going to answer some of those questions today. But if you want to get your questions in for next Thursday's episode, go to my Facebook or my or my Twitter account. And the links for those will be both will be in the description below. So you can follow me on Twitter or you can add me as a friend on Facebook. Now, the first question comes from Destiny. And Destiny says, Brandon, what kind of brushes can I use to get great looking foliage? How can I get nice looking bushes? And what, what would be a brush that would be your go-to brush for, you know, doing about everything? Well, Destiny, I have about two brushes that I use for just about everything that I paint. And that would be a, a one-inch brush. And this one here is a Creative Mark brush uh, from Jerry Dardarama. And the link for this brush will be in the description below. You can get these all the way up from one inch all the way up to three inch brushes. And I really recommend these brushes a lot. They're great for doing blending, trees, clouds. You can do just about everything with this brush. Uh, if you watch our uh, Tuesday Tips videos, uh, you'll see that we'd use this brush for just about everything. All right, now that we've got some well, of the next thing we want to show you in the red, Destiny. Now, I like a fan to brush. You're going to need a fan brush. I recommend these two brushes. These are the two brushes I always recommend is a one inch brush and a fan brush. This is a number six, but I recommend if you're just now starting out to use a number three. Number three fan brush. Which there's two different sizes. There's a six and there's a three, and there's this one inch brush. Now another brush you can also buy if you want to you know, get a bigger one of these. Uh, these are great brushes, the primer brushes. They're great, high quality. Very, very affordable and very worth the money. They're very full brushes. The next one is uh, Creative Marks Mural Brush, and this is a great brush for doing blendings as well. It's like a two inch brush, but the Creative Mark uh, primers, they have them in two inch, two and a half inch brushes, all up to three inch, and they're very great brushes. So those are the two brushes that I think are your all one brushes, the, uh, the fans that create your evergreen trees, so with the one inch brushes, these will create your waterfalls, the one inch brushes can do that as well. These create more tighter, and more detailed clouds. The one brush creates more of a puffy cloud. And when we go to our clouds uh, video, our next tips video on Tuesday's tips, you'll see that we use the fan brush and the one brush for the clouds. Okay. And the next question comes from a Matthew, and Matthew says, "Brandon, what kind of palette should I purchase? There are so many palettes on the market. What kind of palette would you recommend me to buy?" And so I want to grab one here. Let me grab a palette, a package here. It's Got the palette in it. This one here is the uh, Wilson Bickford palette. If you can hear me there better. The Wilson Bickford palette. And this palette is a very large deluxe palette designed by my good friend Wilson Bickford. This one has a nice white tint to it, but it's not, it's off white tint and you get great mixing. Uh, you'll see me use it on my shows a lot. And here's what it looks like out of the package. Right here it is. It's got a great handle on it. It's got a little holes here for your brushes, and it's a great big old palette. It's very comfortable to hold in the hand, easy to mix your colors on, and easy to clean because it's plastic. And I really love this palette a lot. It's one of my favorite palettes to use, and this is what I use on my videos. The next question is what is white base medium, and how does it work? Well, white base medium is a thin white oil paint, and I use. Uh, Wilson Bickford's uh, Fast Flow White Medium, and uh, there's other ones on the market, but I think this one is the best to purchase. It comes in a squirt bottle. It's faster drying, which is what I like to use, especially when we do our full paintings in about one setting, 30 minutes to an hour, two hours, and these paintings would be drying about two or three days. But wet on wet painting is where we apply layers over top of other layers to get one painting in one full setting. And we use a white under base, and we use great big brushes like these uh, one inch brush here and Wilson Bickford has brushes as well and I really enjoy his brushes a lot we're going to do some videos on those as well coming soon on Tuesday Tips and uh, Third Degree Thursdays I got a lot of questions on those but wet on wet we're just applying a thicker paint and a thinner paint on top of the thicker paint okay and it goes to our next question from a Daniel and Daniel says what is um, how do we use white base medium well the white base medium uh, what we do with it this is the one I use. If we put it over top of the canvas, the whole entire canvas, we would apply this stuff. But a very thin coat is all you're going to need. You're going to need about a fingerprint, so you're going to need of this stuff. And we use it to blend our, our colors on our canvas, like the sky and the water. 
Uh, we can we could thin paint with it to do our bushes and tree highlights and water lines. Our next question comes from a Adam, and uh, Adam says, Brandon, what kind of paint is suitable, uh, and what do you recommend for this technique of painting? Well, there's there's many different paints that you can purchase, but I think the one uh, the place to get your paints will be is Jerry's Artorama. They have tons of different paints there. They have the Wilson Bickford Signature Series paint. They sell the uh, Lucas um, 1862 paint and the Lucas Studio paint. Those are the two two great paints to get the Lucas and the Wilson Bigford. And the uh, Wilson Bigford paints are nice, rich, and buttery. These here are nice and rich too. The Wilson Bigford ones are a little bit more stiffer uh, and they're going to be more, it's time to hang with just a little bit more stiffer. Uh, this stuff here dries very quickly, and I love this stuff here, the Lucas 1862, because I can get my colors to dry in layers, and I can apply mist and all that stuff uh, very nicely with this kind of paint. But you want a paint that's very thick, rich, and buttery. Uh, you don't want something that's going to pour on the palette, and it's going to just soup everywhere. That's not paint you want. You want something that's very nice, thick, kind of like a thick peanut butter, um, something very nice and thick like that. The Charvin paints from Lucas, is, uh, from uh, Dre Jordorama is uh, also a really great paint for this as well. And another one is, uh, can we use a clear medium over the white medium? Uh, well, you can use a clear medium. This one here is the Clear Glazing Medium, Wilson Bigford brand. I really, I really love his brand of products, his paints and mediums. They're really good stuff. This stuff here will make your paintings dry quicker too. Uh, the Clear Glazing Medium versus the White Fast Flow White Medium. These have two different effects. This one here will lighten your color up uh, and blend like for a, a, a nice summer day, a nice sunset scene. This one here will keep your color very pure. Meaning is if you're wanting to do a sunset where you want that yellow just to be the yellow right out of the tube, you know, or the color that you mixed up for that, you don't want it to tone it down or pale it or lighten it up any at all, you want to use a clear. And we use a clear for when we apply the, the black gesso uh, over the canvas or something like that and we want to have some blendability then we would use the clear glazing medium for that. Okay, and that's right now, that's the questions that we have. We have another question here from uh, Tom. And Tom says, uh, Brandon, what uh, do you use? Um, what kind of canvas do you use? What kind, you know, what size do you recommend? I recommend the 16 by 20 size canvas. It's a very nice size canvas. You can find frames for those almost everywhere. Um, just a great size. It's not too small. It's not too big. And it's a great size. 18 by 24s are just a little bit step bigger than these. And they are, they have more of a wider angle on them. They're more wider than these here. Um, and you'll be able to get more of a wider landscape on 18 by 24 but if you are like me and you really uh, can uh, you know design a good looking you know composition then a 16 by 20 will be good for you a 16 by 20 size is almost any size canvas is great I recommend 11 by 14 16 by 20 18 by 24 sizes but to get started I recommend the 16 by 20s and there's there's different brands that you can purchase Jerry's Artorama has a a uh, canvas are called Edge, and a lot of my students and myself prefer those as well. There's another canvas called Sunbelt uh, Canvas, and those are good canvases as well. The traditional 56 canvas are great canvases to use as well. Um, and that right there that covers basically the questions, and I think I have one more question from a John. And John says, what kind of easel do you recommend, Brandon? What kind of easel would would be great for the wet on wet technique, you know, something that's going to take a good beating. Well, I have used many different easels over the, the years, and the one that I found the best is you can't, you can't purchase it no more. But the one that I think is the second best and is the best easel to purchase will be the, uh, the Ross 2-in-1 easel. This easel here is made out of metal. It's a great sturdy easel. Uh, all easels are going to move a little bit, but this one here is the, pen. This is the best one to purchase. It's got the best price at Jerry's Odorama. has the best price on these. They come very nicely packaged. It only has three things you have to put together. There's a top piece, which is what holds your canvas. You're going to have your bottom piece, which is your legs, and then your shelf. Okay, and your shelf will hold your bucket, which will have a bucket right here. A little bucket for your, your mineral spirits, turpenoid or your DIY brush cleaner, which is uh, another question we get. 
And the question is, what kind, what was the DIY brush cleaner? How does the DIY brush cleaner work? Well, DIY brush cleaner is vegetable oil, dish detergent, and water. And many people say, do not wash your brushes in soap and water. But you can wash your brushes in soap and water. The big brushes, the big brushes like these, uh, you know, you got your big two inch brushes. All these big brushes like this, you have, you can wash them in soap and water. But the DIY brush cleaner has the vegetable oil in it. And what you want to do is you go to my website at brandthomasart.com and there will be a little tab on there. You click it and uh, it says DIY brush cleaner. It'll give you the ingredients that you want to use. Now, what you want to do is I use it for about two or three paintings, then I just toss it out. It costs you about $4 a gallon to make this stuff. Very cheap to do, um, and it will wash your brushes. Now, it will not distort your one, two inch of brushes. It will, it will kind of puff them out just a tiny little bit, but if you want those to be puffed out, it will keep them nice and soft. It will keep them right back to the original puffed out abilities. This is a brand new brush here. It's puffed out. This is a Ross uh, oval brush. And you can see this is a very nice and puffed out brush. It's just clean with mineral spirits. And you see how it just goes right back to its natural new position. That's what the DIY brush cleaner will do as well. Now, let's say you want to get your brushes extremely clean. You wash with turpinoid or you wash with DIY brush cleaner and there is still some paint still in your brush. Well, how can you get that paint completely out to where the pigment is just completely out of the brush? It's almost a brand new clean brush again. What I do is after I wash them with either the turpinoid or the DIY brush cleaner, is I use ivory brush soap, or ivory soap, or the brush soap, the little brown packaging brush soap you can get in Jersey Dorama. Either of those two will work. The brush soap is better. The ivory soap will work in a pinch. Now, the ivory brush soap, all you want to do, ivory soap or the, or the brush soap, is you take your, your bar soap and your brush. Your brush is kind of semi-clean. And you take it under your water, you get your soap wet, and you take your brush and scrub it into the bar. And what you do, you'll start seeing some pigment coming out. And you're going to think, well, I thought that brush is clean, but it's going to really get it all out. And you just keep washing it out until you see all the pigment out of the brush is gone. And then you just uh, keep rinsing out with water until it's completely got all the soap out. Now, for the fans and the filberts, those are fine. You just dry them out with a paper towel. Just kind of squeeze it with a paper towel and let them sit there and air dry. Now, for your one, two-inch brushes, um, what you're going to do is wrap those in uh, paper towel. So all you want to do is after you've washed these brushes in uh, in your brush soap or your ivory soap is you're going to take these, you're going to beat them out against something like your easel leg or something. You're going to beat them out really good, get as much of that water out as possible, then wrap them with a paper towel and then just set them down on a shelf like that or a table and let them sit there and dry and this will keep your brush from distorting okay and it'll keep your brush nice and soft and brand new feeling all over again and it really will keep your brushes conditioned and very nice the brush soap keeps them conditioned longer the ivory soap will work in a pinch uh, but you know it will work the ivory soap will work but that's all the questions that we have right now for third degree thursday it's been a very great third degree thursday like i said if you want to get your questions answered on here on third degree thursdays go to my facebook or my Twitter uh, account and add me as a friend or follow me there whenever I say uh, we need your questions in just post them there and then we'll select so many of them and we'll post them right here on Third Degree Thursday. Hope you like this video. If you do, rate thumbs up, comment below and please subscribe to our videos. We're constantly adding new videos uh, to the uh, Painting with Magic Kentucky Artist uh, channel here. So we'll see you next time. Thank you.